Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. Today, I'm going to look at this uh, PC I found. It's a Dell Inspiron 531. And I don't know anything about it. All I know is I picked it up for free. It has apparently an AMD 64 Athlon X2, well dual core chip. And it was originally spec for Windows Vista Basic. So, it's got these cool, well, maybe you consider them cool, little concealing doors here. And the first one has your microphone and headphone jack, and it's got four front USB, and I don't know if they're one, 1.1, 1 2.0, whatever, but, and over here we've got what looks like to be maybe a CD-ROM drive, DVD-ROM drive, I don't know, because we haven't looked in it. It's got a cool white case, and it's pretty good shape. You know, I cleaned it up a bit before I brought it in here. Um, if we look at the back, we have just a VGA output, but we have two, three, four more uh, USB ports, an Ethernet port, and a full array of speaker outputs, microphone, and audio out. Has a modem on here, great. It's a decent case in my mind because it's not really scuffed up like some from this era. And somebody threw it away for some reason, so that probably means that power supply might be dead or it just got too slow for them and they didn't want it anymore, so. Inside we've got four RAM slots. Okay, let's pull a RAM module just to look at it and see what we're dealing with, but it's probably DDR2, um, maybe? All right, we got one module here, and it's a Hynix, Hynix? One gig module, PC2 5300U, five, five, so, Looks like there's two gig of RAM in here and dual channel mode. Let's put this back. That probably means that we could easily, easily stick in uh, four to eight gig of RAM if I find the right modules. We got, uh, the motherboard has a PCI Express video card slot, which means room for expandability. Yeah. Four SATA ports here. That's pretty interesting. We got a drive here. Uh, I don't know what size it is. I could pull it out, take four screws, but hey, maybe later. Um, Best Tech. And Best Tech supply, power supply, it looks like a 300 watt power supply. So people throw these away all the time. Too slow, got viruses, hard drive dies, um, power supply crops out. So we don't know what's wrong with it. So I dusted it a bit. Cleaned it up. I have not thermal pasted it. I want to see if it posts. If it posts, we'll see if it boots. And if not, we'll troubleshoot it. Can see uh, the capacitors look okay. But other than that, I don't know anything else. So, without further ado, let's hook this up. And let's see if we can get it to post and see if it runs. It didn't post. No video out either. Mm, first steps first, test the power supply. The power supply tester, 90% of the time voltages are off and it's causing problems and it won't boot. So let's do that. Got the power supply tester on. We got 12 volts. It looks like there's two rails, 12 volts and five volts. So it looks like it's good. And three, four, th everything's spot on for these numbers. Power supply is registering as good. Um, let me flip these RAM modules out of their slots and uh, see what that'll do. Could it be anything? All right, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, right, swap the RAM banks over, and we're not getting a beep. Yeah, we are. What the hell is that? I have to look up the code. Troubleshooting continues. 
gonna put in this small, low profile Radeon card, uh, PCI Express. I think it might be a video out problem, but you know how that goes. And I don't need a modem. Do you need a modem, anyone? Comment below. Comment below if you need a modem. See, this is weird because you gotta line this back up and I think you're, they're doing you a favor, but they're not. To get this in here, I'm half tempted just to, uh, oh, you know, screw the damn thing in there. See that? See that? It's like five million screws and plates popping everywhere. So I'm just putting in the retention screw and calling it a day. The screw holes here and any other PC case would have a standard screw that would work. This one, however, does not. So, comment below if you love working on these proprietary stupid cases, or if I'm just frustrated from working on computers on my day off. And I'm the problem. I'm the problem. It's me. But just pop this back in here and put the one screw in here. And I just want to test for a video signal out. When everything else has failed, you pull the ram. Then you take two sticks or one stick of ram that you know works and try that. One stick of ram. Could be I have a bad ram stick in my pile. Anything's possible. One post. We have post. We have ignition. We have liftoff. All right, diskette seek error failure. We don't care about that. We got a post, everyone. Let's zoom in a little bit. This ram stick or that slot doesn't work well together. And we got a 4,000 plus CPU. We have, what do we have? DVD ROM drive. Let's go to the BIOS and see what we have. All right, battery's dead in the CMOS. That's probably half the problem. Dual core 4,000 processor. 2.1 gigahertz. What do we know? CPU's good, motherboard's good, power supply's good. And we're on our way. And what we also know is we can probably upgrade this system to a little bit faster processor, but I'm not really gonna mess with that yet. Got to get this thing booting and yeah, the hard drive is most likely dead. Let's shut it off. Get some more memory in a spare hard drive. All right, we uh, found out that uh, RAM was bad. Not one stick that was in it, but both. And I had some spares, so I put in four gig of DDR2, 667 megahertz RAM. Replaced the CMOS battery. Pulled the hard drive, it was a Seagate uh, SATA 250 gig drive. And it sounds like the heads are crashing and it's no good. So I'm limited on spare equipment. So minimal cost, I already had the RAM. PNY 120 gig SSD cheap like you know like nine bucks or something 20, 10 bucks at that so we're gonna put it in there and I think I'm gonna try a new OS maybe a Linux version or something torn down maybe Linux mint mate is it mate or mate let's put it in here see if the Elmer video works if it doesn't then we'll go back to the other PCI graphics card I have and go from there Come on, let's go. All right, we have the 
the PCI Express spare video card that I have in here is working. The onboard one doesn't work. All right, the final grade I did was I swapped out the anemic AMD Athlon 64 4000 dual core chip for a 4850E dual core chip. It will give, you, give us a modest bump of 500 megahertz and hopefully uh, that'll be good. It's not, it's seeing it as an unknown processor. So we're gonna install Linux Mint Mate. It's a little bit lower uh, resource intensive version but it'll might run it might run a little bit better than cinnamon so let's go ahead and get this done and see how it runs on this dual core system with a 120 gig ssd and a 4 gig of ddr2 come on let's go I had to start this linus ming mate in a compatibility mode because it just won't run on normal mode, I don't know why. So we're gonna try to install it from compatibility mode and then go from there. Fingers crossed. Old computers, you never know what's gonna happen. Yes, it's at a weird angle. The camera's at a weird angle, but you know why? Because this PC monitor is the second one on the ground here on top of another PC that I'm actually working on more than one at once. So Linux Mate is kind of like the same in that when you boot up off the um, CD or your install ISO, it gives you a live CD and then you install from there. So we're gonna fly through this. It's about the same as Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition, which is more full-fledged uh, featured, rather. This is more of a little bit lighter version, but it's still capable. So, made for a little bit older PC. So, let's get this done. Well, let's just uh, erase the disk. Well, it's copying files. This may take a while since it's doing it from the C the DVD ROM. So we'll be back and when we get into the desktop and see what it looks like. See how it runs on this dual old dual core 64 bit X2 4850E chip. For whatever reason, this jalopy Dell doesn't want to run anything but Windows. Why? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's just like, won't boot from it. It's gotta be a setting in the BIOS or something, but it, you know, there's nothing there. There's nothing in the BIOS that I can see to, to, to set it. It's just an SSD drive. And there you have it. The uh, Inspiron 531, 120 gig SSD, cost nine dollars and then my ram which was free and a dollar cmos battery and a fresh installed windows 10 
Linux Mate wouldn't work. I don't know why, but Windows 10, working fine. It still is usable for everyday web browsing computer. Beyond that, gaming, etc., don't get your hopes too high. But that's what you can do with a PC that someone gives you. If you have some spare parts, don't put a lot of money into it, but you can get a up-to-date web browsing machine, small entertainment value for very little money. Well, thus concludes the restoration and rebuild of the 531 Dell Inspiron PC that I rescued. The reason why I grabbed it is because the case, the white case, kind of caught my eye. Now let's be real here, this PC isn't going to win any speed awards. Now what could you do with this? You could browse the web, do some light word processing, play some really old games maybe. or you could give it to someone in need who doesn't have a lot of money, like an older person who that's all they're going to do, or maybe maybe a kid who doesn't have anything at all or they can't afford a PC. At least it might get them on the internet, you know. They might have something they can work on their schoolwork or something. It's not a laptop, it's not super powerful, but to someone who doesn't have anything, it could be a big help. Thanks for coming along with me on this computer revival session. And thanks for watching Remember This Tech.